Hello fellow Chief, this is Captain Fire 3 with some more I Love You Colonel Sanders, the KFC Dining Simulator. And I'm just I'm just gonna start. <laughs> for years I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than eleven herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You would look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. I would too because I mean he has a restaurant called KFC. Of course not in this game, but he's pretty world renowned, I guess. But that's all uh, but that's all I'll say about it. <coughs> what you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pusha Nah my dude, nah. I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is uh, poison. Got him! He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. They're not, because it's not a sick burn at all. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry a chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants them all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van, the man man. If you don't want any, I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, no, it. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. <laughs> I didn't realize that he changed expressions, but he's like, Bleh! it's so, so good. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now, there's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his, this bucket, this bucket, and see, sink your teeth into it. It's, it's amazing! Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Along with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment, trying to identify every flavor, save for the moment, and everything that it tells you about this one. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt, maybe? Pepper? Too obvious? Oregano? Basil? Maybe, but there's something else. Something dark, something spicy, you dig deeper, deeper, deeper. Yes, even deeper still until you find it. Could it be the secret recipe? <laughs> like they can't they can't say it because it's KFC's secret recipe, that's funny. He really did it. How bold, how adventurous do you beep? You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. A mental responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly. He it, it does not look like he's smiling whatsoever. It's more like a straight face. If I'm cur yeah, he's like kind of frowning, but also like trying to be sexy, I guess. I don't know. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Ha ha ha! How bold to come out and ask. Oh my god, I want a cane with a chicken on top of it. Wait, where did he get that? Did he just pull that from behind him or something? Did he just have like a chicken staff? It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors. 
that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. You've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sinners looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use beep. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. I just realized I didn't do his voice. Beep! Wow! You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get s some if you searched. And beep! It definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before, so now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe, but you don't know Colonel Sanders. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. Am I a guy or a girl? I don't know. You find Colonel Sanders outside standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. Oh my god, I thought that was a blood stain. It's a pen. Sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Neg him to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. This one. You know about that, I was thinking about your secret recipe. I don't doubt it. It has a way of leaving an impression on all who taste it. You decide to show him that you also know a thing or two about blowing minds with new flavors. I actually had some thoughts on how you could improve it. Improve it? You want to change my secret recipe? And you think you can do better? Have you ever heard of habanero peppers? Oh, he's sweaty. <gasps> heard of them? I tend an entire garden of chili pepper vari varieties. Habanero, poblano, cayenne. But that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients into my secret recipe and inspect to improve it. The recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. I, I I didn't mean to let this be the last time you improvise on my recipe, Scott. I'm heading back to class for the next lesson. That certainly didn't go as planned. You'd better head back inside, but you wait a moment so that Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. You step into the- oh wow, arena, hold on. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Wow, actually. Look at this place, it's magnificent! Finally we get to show our stuff! Wait a second, oh no, we have to show our stuff? What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything except this dude! No, um. Except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, 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 whoa, who? Hey, Colonel Sanders. Uh, mm, hey, Colonel. God, I can't read or talk. Would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is, that is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Sure, Scott. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner! Beep boop. Oh my. Oh my! Two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Clank, duh. I mean, look at him. She'll for sure win. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. 
It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clink is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. <laughs> Hold on there, fella. You don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Bzzz. Tissue? I hardly know you! <laughs> Clank judders, and the panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner? Steak tartare, octopus... Uh... Steak tartare. I had a delicious steak tartare once at an incredibly fancy restaurant. It was simple but sophisticated. Maybe we could make that? Beef. Raw beef. With seasoning and egg yolk on top. Scott, I must admit, I'm disgusted right now. Consider our partnership ended. Scott, where's your partner? I suggested we prepare steak tartare and raw, raw beef? Pack your things, your time at University of- Ah, uh, no! Of S Cooking School Academy for- Uh, learning is over. Ah, oh, you shithead. God damn it. I didn't know what steak tartare was. Okay, hold on. So now that I'm here... I can be honest but thoughtful. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery it was perfect. I appreciate the com I appreciate the compliment, Scott. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. Kiss already, damn it! We, sh we should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Uh, okay. Let's Aww. skip all this dialogue. Give her clank again. Okay. Octopus. Oh, I get it. Because I, because KFC. That's right. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes and gravy. I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red, embarrass you, quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. And you'd better keep your fingers off of my man. Did someone call... Uh, did somebody call for me? Uh, no, jeez, Van Van. Well, I'll, uh, while I'm over here crushing Scott's dream, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns arms full. Oh, poor Van Van. Too bad he's a jerk. I would actually feel bad for him. Colonel Sanders returns arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley, Van Van. Are you we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Scott was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chef, uh, chefs, chefs, chefs need a lot of mentoring. 
I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Huh. Doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. I hate, I hate him. But, Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for you, Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to a ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Uh, of course I'm going to Colonel Sanders because fuck me. I'm here to learn and to express myself via my cuisine, not bigger with prima donnas. Uh, partners were chosen at the beginning class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders and Colonel Sanders chose me, isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Scott as my partner for this activity and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Scott's natural talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on a- Oh, interesting. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture. With plenty of butter and cream for flavor, it's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy. Smothering your nearly finished potato dish. That kind of looks good, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't look like the real thing, though. Gravy floats down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure of this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spork full up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be Colonel, uh, with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a finger full of Van Van tastes the dirty mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Scott. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potatoes face? Oh my god, that's weird. Van Van rushes back over a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potato uh, mashed potatoes with gravy. Pathetic. In just a few minutes I prepared a full meal, gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus and my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Vin Vin and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. 
I don't feel so good. Oh my god, he's a ghost now. It killed him! Everyone step back, don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. Wow, he's stupid. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things despite obvious danger has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What? Like for real? Come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. It's a lot spooky, in fact. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Scott? There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I could be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working toward that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts that our souls may grant them. Like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you, shut up, I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. I also saw you kill a guy. Was What was his name? Someone in the distance you hear alongside that side. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. Oh god, that that's creepy. Oh my god, his teeth are sporks. There's gravy as his, like, spit. Sporks. The spork monster is here to fight it here. Oh wait, hold on. The spork monster is here to fight it here. <laughs> I, uh, I think I left the French door open later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was laying down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Don't be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Is he, is his, is he's rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? Well, before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Attack. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. One damage. It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. Trepidation, sorry. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. It seems like a very weird strategy, but okay, sure, you do you. Spork Monster focuses, focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. Oh, well, I respond to attack. You decided to go on the attack. Cook with love because that's the only one I have. Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. 
Uh, Spark Monster uses Utila Utensil. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Attack. You decide to go on the attack. Cook with love. Spork Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the line of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. For its ultimate attack, rounded edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Hot Pie Power Pinch! Pop Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You, you saved me! An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. I forget Mercy. Finish him. No student will ever walk the quad in fear again. This monster messed with the wrong chef. Attack. You ready your final attack? You'll never survive my student debt load. Uh, student loan debt destruction! Does 10 damage. Spork monster is completely vaporized. Colonel Sanders looks on in awe. You continue to surprise me, Scott. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Interesting. You open the cover and find a library card tucked in. Wait. The last n name to have signed it out is Borko. Hmm. I wonder who Borko is. Borko. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. I want to say it's the professor, isn't it? Well, if you like this video, leave a like, comment down below if you want to see more or what you want me to do next. Subscribe if you're new and may the odds be in your favor.